What's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to mix together some different After Effects techniques we've talked about in the past to create this awesome infinity zoom effect. Where you're able to make your own custom um, transitions that travel through time and space. As always, if you do enjoy, slap a like on the video. It means a huge amount uh, in boosting this with the YouTube algorithm. Comment anything you'd like to see down below. And of course, if you are a visual artist, if you enjoy learning about how to create things, slap that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the knowledge we're dropping weekly. And last thing before we get started, I also wanna say, if you guys are looking for any digital tools to help speed up your process and create awesome visuals, check out my website, mediamonopoly.co. We have tons of digital assets, presets, plugins, extensions to help you create the best possible visual art in the shortest amount of time. I was inspired by this Reddit post here. I'm gonna leave his Instagram down below, super nice guy. So I found some footage that'll work well uh, on pexels.com where you can grab any royalty-free footage. And essentially, I just wanted to look for a spot where it kind of looked like they were pulling apart like this. A big part of this is working with the footage, working with the motion of what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Control Shift D just to cut that footage. And I'm gonna cut out the exact little part where I want to animate the sort of portal opening up. Now that we've done that, let's go in and actually animate in some simple little lines to have our portal opening and this is really easy i've talked about making these animated lines a bunch in the past if you guys are beginners and you want a full tutorial on just this i'll leave the link down below but either way you want to double click on that clip that we just cut out and you want to make sure you're in a layer if you're not a layer just double click again until you are in that layer because the layer kind of just shows the entire composition if you want you can switch back and forth from our main comp to kind of know where to make a cut on the layer and that way you have the exact area cut out from the layer that we're going to paint so start on frame one you can click page up and page down to move frame by frame we're going to go up and grab our paintbrush tool and then you can use the little tabs on the right your brushes and the actual paintbrush to change around your settings change your color change your brush size whatever and we're just going to go and start drawing in our little portal opening so really simple I'm just going to start with a little dot on frame one then i'm going to click page down to move to the next frame and i'm going to start drawing the beginnings of a circle and that's really about it move to your next frame draw a circle move to your next frame draw a circle make sure the circle is in between the hands whenever you play that at full speed it should look like it should look like a circle is opening up so keep clicking page down to move to the next frame keep drawing your circle so that you have your full animation going on if you want you guys can even go in here and animate some other stuff um, like drawing a couple lines around the shoes just to kind of emphasize other parts in the scene where, where there may be some sort of motion. So now that we have our little portal animation drawn, what we're gonna do next is actually cut out the parts that are within that circle. So to do that, we're gonna do some basic masking. And this is very easy. I went ahead and just renamed these layers so you have a better idea of how this composition is starting to um, form together. So we have our intro part, which is, which is just the beginning before any of our animation. We have the open portal part. We have the travel through portal part, and then we have the exit. I'll talk about those a bit more later, but for now, just select your open portal layer where we drew our animations, and we're going to grab our pen tool. We're gonna to go ahead and just draw within that circle, and then we can click M and change that mask to subtract. Next, you wanna keyframe the mask path, and then move frame by frame, and just adjust that mask every single frame where the animation moves. It should be pretty easy to mask this just because we already drew the circle. So we're basically just changing those little joints to make sure that mask is within the circle. So again, just move frame by frame, keyframe that mask path. Once you guys have finished, you should have your portal opening up and you should have a black or transparent circle within your line there. And just to show you that this is transparent, I'm just gonna right click and create a new solid. I'll name this galaxy for now and I'll make it blue. I'm gonna click and drag that layer all the way beneath all of our other layers. So it's at the bottom of the stack. And that way you can see that layer peeking through our portal. So that's the basics of how we can kind of animate, open up a portal within somebody's hands. Now what we need to do is just design what's going on in the portal and then create a camera to fly through it. Now, before we do that, a couple other creative design steps. If you guys wanna make your animation look a little bit better, what you can do is actually select your open portal layer. You can click Control D to duplicate it. And on this duplication, I'm gonna right click and rename this layer to Portal Glow. And then I'm just gonna go into my effects and presets and after effects and drag in the default glow effect. Now you see it makes the entire scene glow. So to fix that in your effect control, find your paint effect and just check on paint on transparent. You can change around the glow radius and all the other settings until you've kind of locked in the glow look that you want. Or if you guys have any other presets, plugins, whatever, you guys can customize this to your liking. So I slapped on a um, 
Red Giant Universe Chromatic Glow. I thought that looked pretty cool. Um, and I just changed around the glow radius, just like how you would with the normal glow. All right, so we have our portal opening up. Let's actually change around what's going on inside the portal and start building some of the animations and assets that you're gonna see as you fly through the portal. So if you guys remember before, I created that galaxy layer. It's basically just a placeholder to show what's inside the portal. Let's go in and start designing the portal. So I'm gonna right click on that galaxy layer and I'm going to pre-compose it. And then I can double click into that galaxy layer and change around what's inside the comp to our liking. We're just gonna grab our base footage that we started with. I'll drag it in there, and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so that it's centered on his face, and then just scroll through the footage by click and dragging it until I find a spot where we have his face kind of in like an open expression or any other expression that you wanna animate. Once you found that exact spot, I'm just gonna right click on this clip and I'm gonna go to time and I'm going to freeze frame it. So if we were to scroll through, everything is frozen in place. You basically now just have a picture. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and pre-compose this layer and then click move all attributes into the new composition, name it face animation. And then I can double click in that pre-comp Make sure I double click on that layer again so that we're in the layer up in the top instead of a composition. And I'll do the exact same thing I did before. I'll just grab my paintbrush tool and I'll start drawing on this layer. You can choose if you want to animate this frame by frame or if you just want to draw one, ex draw one frame. I chose just to draw one frame. Again, if you guys want to, you can do what we did with the portal opening up. You can click page down and try and make different animations, whatever. Um, the cool thing about this tutorial, there's so much room for customization in this. So you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. I'm just giving you a basic blueprint. I also, in the effect controls, want to click on paint on transparent like we did earlier so that we just have the lines without the face behind it. And then I can click back into my composition to see what that looks like. You guys in this stage can also grab any other little assets, backgrounds, whatever, and place them within that secondary composition that we set up. So I just went and looked up some trippy backgrounds. You guys could recreate a lot of this just using presets, plugins, and After Effects. So again, it's up to you however you wanna design it. For now, I'm just gonna drag in one of those trippy backgrounds into my galaxy composition, and then I'll just drag it as a layer below the face, scale it up a bit, and we'll just leave it at that for now. We'll go in and add some more different crazy assets later. All right, so at this stage, this is what your composition should look like. Now let's go in and start animating the beginning of our camera flying through. So first off, you want to click toggle switches and modes, and you want to make sure every single layer is a 3D layer. That way, whenever we add in our camera, we'll be able to actually change things in 3D space. So now that you've done that, right click in that gray space and go to new and add in a camera. We're going to click OK here, and we're going to drag that to the top. And what I'm going to do is just open up that camera's transform options, keyframe all of those little points, drag forward in the timeline a little bit, and then I'm gonna click C to toggle through the camera controls until I see that little zoom control. And then you can click C, use the pan to center that up and just make sure you're zooming through the portal into our next composition. Once you played around with those keyframes and spaced them out a little bit to get your timing down perfectly, here's what it should look like. Now that you have our basic zoom from our starting position into the portal, I'm gonna start adding in a couple of different 3D assets, and then we're going to build the second part of our in the portal composition. So I'm gonna drag in some of those star images that I saved earlier. This one wasn't a transparent background, so I'll just take my pen tool, go around the outside. Once I've masked that out, I'll right click, pre-compose it, move on to new, just like that. Just like that, compositions did good to go. We don't have to worry about any masks in our way. I'm gonna drag the clip so that it starts where I want it to. You wanna make this layer a 3D layer, just like all the other ones. And then I'm gonna grab that star layer and just drag it all the way down beneath our open portal so that it's within the portal. Then I can click S and scale it down and move it. And here's where things start to get really cool. So because these are all 3D layers, what you can actually do is open the transform options for them. And you're gonna see some of these values. So in your position slider, the third value there is your Z axis. It's the little blue one if you see it selecting there, it kind of moves away from or towards the camera. What we can do is actually set a little keyframe for our position and then drag that Z axis so that it sort of floats from in the portal to outside of the portal. Looks really cool. It looks like things are kind of like shooting out of the portal. That way you can be moving into it or things can be coming out. You're manipulating everything in 3D space exactly the way you want to. If things are looking a little bit weird, again, just play with your scale, play with your position until you have the animation of the star coming out just the way you want it.
Another cool thing you can do, and we're gonna do this with a lot of the assets just to add a lot more um, complexity, you can duplicate the star layer. So we can select it and click Control D. And what, all you have to do on these duplications is just go to the transform options for them and just take that little keyframe that we set earlier for the Z position and just drag the timing out a little bit more. That way you have the same animation of it moving out of the portal, but the timing of it will, will just be a little bit more slow than the one before it. So you can have one coming out, then the other, then the next. It's a cool way to kind of just like shoot a bunch of things at the camera at once. I'm going to come back and use that exact technique later on when we add some um, other assets. So let's start building out our composition. We have it zoom into the face, but nothing really happens from there. So what I'm going to do is drag in another one of these trippy looking backgrounds and I'll place that within my composition and just kind of space it over. So instead of having, so instead of it just cutting to black, it goes to this background. You want to make sure that the layer stacking for this second background is all the way at the bottom. So make sure it's below the first trippy background we put in. And because these are all 3D layers, again, if you haven't made that a 3D layer, make sure you do so. Because it's a 3D layer, sometimes you're going to have to change the Z axis so that things aren't in front of the other. You can also keyframe the opacity a little bit if you want it to kind of fade in. Um, that's a good it's a good little thing to do for other assets if you want them to fade in one after the, one after the other while you are building these compositions. Uh, it does require a lot of tweaking. And I will say that the more time and more things you put into this, the more um, crazy it's going to look. So keep that in mind when you're building things together. Once we have our second background in here, we need to continue on our zoom through transition. So go back to our camera and we're going to, again, go past those original keyframes we sent, grab our zoom tool and just keep zooming it forward. That way we have a bit more time to work with here. So now I'm going to go in and add a second animated face. So this time I'm going to give you a little alternate tip here because I think it could help you, especially with customizing, adding a whole bunch of different things using the power of Photoshop. So before I showed you how to freeze the layer, pre-compose it, um, and then just draw using the After Effects animation brush, the only downside to that is you only have one specific brush. You don't have custom brushes like you do in Photoshop and you're kind of limited just to that. So what you can do instead, we can create another new composition and I'll name this one Face Animated 2. We can do a similar setup like we did earlier where we find the part of the face we want to animate. We scale it up, we center it, we right click, go to time and freeze frame it. So we just have our picture frozen just the way we want it. But instead of going and using our paint tool, we can go up to composition, we can go to save frame as, and we can go to Photoshop layers. So if you guys have the Creative Cloud subscription, you should have Photoshop already downloaded. So once you save that project file, you can just open wherever you save the file and just double click on it. And it's going to open up within Photoshop. So I think this is a lot easier, especially with the dynamic linking between Photoshop and After Effects. Plus it gives you everything that Photoshop has to offer. So if you want to create like crazy filters, if you want to use neural filters, if you want to use any of the Photoshop brushes or tutorials that are out there on the internet, because there's millions of them, you guys can alter this image however you want. So again, if you want to just add a simple animation, you can click in the bottom right to create a new layer and just drag that all the way above. And this is going to be our animation layer. So I'll just go grab my brush tool and in the top left, I can choose any of these Photoshop brushes to my liking. So again, there's a bunch of crazy custom ones that you can't do in After Effects, really cool. I'll just grab this, kind of recreate what I did in After Effects where I'll just outline the face. Once I've outlined that face, what you wanna do is hide the layers beneath that animated layer. So the ones showing the footage and you wanna click File, Save. So we're just saving the project file. Now, the cool thing about Photoshop and After Effects, you can just go back into After Effects, drag and drop that, that Photoshop layer straight in. And of course, all this is optional. You guys don't have to use Photoshop in this workflow. You can use the animation brush. I created the same thing I did. But I think that if you do work this into your workflow, it gives you a lot more tools to be able to work with. So I figured I'd show it. So again, drag that Photoshop layer straight in and you now have a second animated face. You want to import it as an editable layer style. It'll say the description here. It should say um, import it exactly how it looks like within Photoshop. If you guys applied any glowing like I did with the lines earlier, you can go find the glow in your effect controls for the first face, select them, click Control C to copy it, select our new face, click in your effect controls, click Control V to just to paste those in. Now we have a second glowing face and you want to do the same thing. You want to enable the 3D layer switch, and then you want to play with the Z position. And that's the ultimate step for kind of building your composition from here out. You want to create your asset, 
you want to make it a 3D layer, and then you want to change around the Z position. We already have our camera set up, so we don't have to worry about that. The zoom is fine. If anything, you could just tweak the keyframes of it. But in terms of placing things where you want, in the timing of everything, how close it is to the camera as the camera is zooming through, play with that third value there, the Z position. And from here, it's a lot of the same. So what I'm going to do is just keep adding in those assets. Remember the three steps that I mentioned, add in your assets, make it a 3D layer, change the Z position. Let me show you some variations of that. I'll use my text tool here. I'll give it some fancy different characters. And uh, what I'm going to do is again, once I've made my asset, I'm going to make it a 3D layer, play with the Z position, and then I'll add that kind of repeater like I did with the star. So I'll just select my text once I have the positioning of it set up the way I like. I'm gonna select it and click Control D to duplicate it. And then I'll take the position of that duplicated layer and I'm going to change the Z position. So it's just a little bit behind. And again, you can keep repeating that as many times as you want. So you can have infinite text flying through in that repeating fashion. You can add in any other PNG. So what I did was just drag in some like other little NES stuff Again, change the timing, made it a 3D layer, change the Z position, and then if you want, add the repeater. You can also apply any cool effects onto these backgrounds. Um, I added in a little turbulent displace and just keyframed the amount, so it just kind of like swirled a little bit. And that's really about it, guys. Those are the core steps. I'll just put a little time lapse here of me um, building out my composition. And that's where I want you guys to completely flourish and customize it to your own vision so many different things you can do, so many different ways to alter this. So in my case, what I did, I took some of those Red Giant Universe plugins and just played around with them until I had some cool stuff. I think the main ones I used was like Universe VHS, Universe AV Club, I think Universe Ecto I slapped onto the text just to make it look a little cooler. And then I also used Universe Glitch with a preset just to glitch everything up. So those are all the core steps for being able to create this. To end it all off and to transition back into our normal footage, if you remember, I kept a little part um, that I named end. What I can do is just cut all the assets where I want it to end to go back to the normal footage. That way, instead of cutting the black, it'll cut. Everything will go away right at that moment and go back to normal. From there, I just did the rest in Adobe Premiere. So what you can do is just file save this After Effects composition. You can open up Adobe Premiere. You can click this little page in the bottom left and create a transparent video. And then you can just right click on that transparent video and click replace with After Effects composition. That'll open up that dynamic link into After Effects. You can just take the main comp that you set up there and drag it straight onto that linked composition. That way, once you file save, go back into Premiere, you'll see everything you did in After Effects right in Premiere. So you can color grade here, you can speed duration, change the timing of anything, and you can slap in any other presets. So I went through my preset packs, um, my Max Novak preset pack, effects pack two, and my Speed Demon effects pack two. And I just dropped in some cool transitions to kind of bridge the gap between the animated composition and going back to normal. Really easy. All I had to do was drag and drop it. Shows you the power of presets. So as always, guys, if you did enjoy, slap a like, comment down below if there's any other cool ideas. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. I'll see you guys in the next one.